are one in the body, we are one in His love, we are one in the Father, Spirit, Son. It's a blessing to be coming to you this morning from a little bit less tumultuous conditions than we were facing a week ago. God has been good to us through this storm and continue to be good to us through this ongoing pandemic. And as we worship the Lord together, let's cry out to him and praise his holy name. Let us pray. God, you've been good to us through the eye of the storm. And in the midst of the pestilence that has surrounded us, you have been present. We find ourselves again seeking your face as we seize more opportunities to live as your hands and feet through a season of disaster relief that comes in the middle of this pandemic. Lord, we don't pretend to be smart enough to understand why these things happen, but we look to you, trust in your undying love, and anchor our hope in the powerful name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has promised never to leave or forsake us. Bless us, O oh Lord, in your service. And we dare to ask that you might use us to bless this community that you love so much. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray together. Amen. Good morning, First Baptist Church, Westlaco. We pray that you have weathered the worst of Hurricane Hannah. We're so glad that you're worshiping here with us this morning. As we start with our call to worship, I'd like to ask for a little help from some of my Treehouse Club friends. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth gave away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. The waters of the sea may roar and foam. But the mountains will shake and the water rise, but we will not be afraid. God's blessings are like a river. They fill the city of God with joy. That city is the holy place where most high of God lives. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when the morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. Verse 7. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. Psalms 46, 9. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is with us. Hey guys, good morning. Uh, we have a few things we want to share with you today, but before we do that, let us go ahead and go to the Lord with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning with just mixed and all kinds of baggage because of everything that has transpired. Of course, we continue to deal with this whole pandemic. And then last weekend, Hurricane Hannah. So many people trying to pick up the pieces. And as of yesterday, there were still people without power. And as I drove around Northwest Daco, still saw a lot of standing water and homes still underwater. Father, we just pray that uh, we find the people that can go out and help and of course we pray for the texas baptist men and christian aid ministries that are here ready to start helping people that are in need father we want to continue to lift up the front line all of our police officers our fire department our emt doctors and nurses and all of the staff that work at any type of medical facility and of course the hospitals as they continue to deal with this pandemic covid19 Father, again, we just pray that, that you continue to cover us with your love, cover us with your protection, and just make your presence so felt in our midst. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, guys, this morning we're going to share a few things with you. First of all, of course, just want to remind you that we do have Bible studies happening 
throughout the week. We've got a Spanish study being held, being led by Brother Guadalupe Gonzalez at, through the Book of Romans. Contact the church office if you want any more information about that. Robin is leading a teen Bible study on Tuesdays for Our Ladies. And then, of course, the Morales family leading one on Wednesday nights. And, of course, we're going through the Gospel of John on Wednesday nights as well. So if you need any more information, just contact the church office and we'll get you all the information that you need. We do want to let you know that because of all the things that have happened here, we are putting the pause button on a few of our ministries, one of them being the food pantry and the other being the care packages. So we're putting the pause button on those for just a little bit because we want to let you know that there's going to be several opportunities for you to serve in the coming days and weeks. We know last weekend that we were hit hard by Hurricane Hannah and Texas Baptist men, they are here, they are ready to start helping these families that are in need with cleanup. We got a chainsaw crew and of course we'll be doing mud outs as well. We're not asking you to be here each and every day, but if you are available one day, two days throughout the week, by all means, feel free to contact us here at the church. We will get you assigned to a crew so that you can go out and bless families by helping get them back into their home. So again, we just want to encourage you to come out and be a helping hand as we continue to help out those who have been hit the hardest by Hurricane Hannah. Of course, at this time, we also want you guys to turn around, take a selfie. Your families, wherever you're at, the breakfast table in front of the TV, maybe on the sofa, take a selfie, shoot it to us via social media using the hashtag FBC Westlaco, so that we can share this with everybody around the world wide web. Well, guys, this next song is one of my favorites, No Hay Dios. It's a song that we are going to sing in Spanish. For those of you guys that may not know the song, may not be familiar with the song, or may not speak the language, we'll have the words underneath in a caption form. But just to want to let you know that we do worship in two languages here at First Baptist Church in Westlake. We worship in Spanish, and we also have a worship service in English. So for those of you guys that have never been to our Spanish service, we're going to give you a little taste of what it's like. Here it is. No hay Dios. No hay Dios tan grande como tú. No lo hay No hay Dios tan grande como tú No lo hay No lo hay
Well, good morning, church family. I hope everyone is safe and recovering from the hurricane or even the COVID virus. You are constantly in our prayers. A reading from Deuteronomy 14, 23, the Living Bible. Bring your tithe to eat before the Lord your God at the place he shall choose as his sanctuary. This applies to your tithes of grain, new wine, olive oil, and the firstborn of your flocks and herds. The purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God first in your lives. So the fruit of the spirit that we're going to hear about this morning is faithfulness. And our mighty God is a faithful God, isn't he? Yes, he is. He is sovereign, and because his spirit lives within us, he wants us to display that same spirit of faithfulness. One of his commands on being faithful and being a follower of him is to give back to his kingdom through our tithing. Now, more than ever, is the time to show that faithfulness by giving toward the ministries that we have to help our family of faith and the community. Besides giving to the general fund, any donations that you can give toward the disaster relief efforts would be greatly appreciated and utilized. From giving out 300 care packages to healthcare workers at Knapp Hospital, to providing food and shelter during the roughest storms, and with helping families recover with mud outs and cleanups after hurricane, all are part of the act of faithfulness. You know, I always love how sweet and creative our God is with our giving. He's, it's exciting to see what he does. And it's exciting to see by giving to him, it's an investment. It's an investment in his kingdom. It's an inv investment in our ministries. And it's being the hands and feet of Jesus. So I want to encourage you to be faithful this week. Let us pray for the offerings. Father God, thank you. Thank you for always taking care of every one of our needs now or even in the future. Show us ways we can give back to you more. Father, we also lift up these offerings to you this week. We pray for your favor, your blessing. Please multiply them. Help us to trust you more with what we do and what we say and what we give. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The fruit of the spirit is not a coconut. Well, if you want to be a coconut, then you might as well hear it. Oh, you can't be a fruit of the spirit, because the fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. One more time, with a little help from our friends. The fruit of the spirit is not a coconut. The fruit of the spirit is not a coconut. Knock, knock. Okay, you guys are supposed to sing, not just. Okay, ready? One more time. Ready? The fruit of the spirit is not a coconut. The fruit of the spirit is not a coconut. If you wanna be a coconut. Might as well hear it. Oh, you can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. No, as fast as you can. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I am coming to you now, not from the beach, but from my Zoom meeting headquarters, where we meet every Wednesday at 11 o'clock a.m. All righty, so let's go ahead and pray together for all of our kids and all of our families during this pandemic. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the technology that you give us, where we can meet with one another, even though we're not able to gather together in person. Lord, thank you for the time of studying the Bible and 
and uh, playing Kahoot and having a good time. Bless us, bless each of the families that are represented here in this service this morning. Until we meet again, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Galatians 5, 16 through 26. As we continue this conversation about the fruit of the Spirit, and look specifically at the Christ-like virtue of faithfulness, I can't help but think of the story of faithfulness that has been written in our church ever since 1921. That's a story in which we're all players now, whether we realize it or not. It's interesting that the historical marker that sits outside our sanctuary is tied to our congregation and, and not to our building. And that's been an important thing to remember during this time when we're not able to come into our building for collective worship. It's been important to remember that our church is bigger than a building, that we, we are the church. That's an important part of faithfulness, to, to keep that in our minds, to remember that we are First Baptist Church of Wessico. This morning, as I think about this spiritual virtue of faithfulness, I can't help but also think about just the stories I've heard over the years as I've gotten to know people who've served here in our congregation. These are stories of those who came before us long before we stepped onto the scene, and they stepped out in faith, and they sacrificed, and they pulled together to be a part of what God was doing in our town. Before she went to be with the Lord, I used to love to just sit and listen as Miss Anor Nash would speak of her time in our church. Miss Anor was Marilyn Messiah's mom and Miriam's grandma, and she would talk about our sanctuary as the new building. If that gives you an idea of how long she was a part of our church's story, that new building was completed in 1928. Those cornerstone members of our church, like the Nash family, cast a big vision for First Baptist Church Wesleyco. And, and just after they borrowed the money and built our, our sanctuary that we still use today, the bottom fell out of the stock market in the great crash of 1929. Banks closed. Jobs became increasingly scarce. Prominent farmers and businessmen in the area who had made millions of dollars investing in the stock market, now found after the crash that they didn't have two nipples to rub together in their pockets. Anor said that during those lean years, ladies from the church would go along the side of the road during cotton season and pick up cotton that had blown out of trailers on the way to the gin and take that discarded cotton and, and, and sell it at the gin and and they would give the money they made to the church to help the church pay their note on their building. People worked and scraped and saved and gave to keep the church's ministries going, even through that difficult time. As I hear Paul say to the church of Galatia and to us that the fruit of the Spirit 
is faithfulness. I can't help but think of that great legacy. We stand on shoulders of giants like that as we go throughout our own difficulties. We're going through a tough time right now with the pandemic we're facing and the economic fallout it's produced. And now we're dealing with Hurricane Hannah. It seems like at the most inopportune time having to deal with this issue of, of, of rainfall and, and the real damage that it tends to produce in our community. And I, I think one of the most difficult parts about this season we're mired in right now is the uncertainty. How bad are things going to get with the pandemic, with the storm? What else are we going to have to face? What is school going to look like in the fall for our kids? When are things going to settle down enough for our medical system to catch back up and, and us to feel safer about the way things are going? What's the political fallout from all of this mess going to look like moving forward? And what kind of world are we going to be left with? Just how many funerals are we going to be a part of before all is said and done? And for us, a great big question is, when are we going to be able to get back together for worship and fellowship in person with any kind of consistency? And what is that going to look like when we're able to do that? I think we're long past the time of being ready for answers to those questions. We, we want to know what the answer is, but we still don't have those answers. And, and that can be very anxious and very frustrating. The faithful legacy of our congregation, though, reminds us that believers have been through tough times here before and lived to tell about it. We are blessed to be part of that great legacy of faithfulness that is the fruit of the Spirit and the norm of life in the kingdom of God. Years ago, the church went through a bit of a financial struggle, and our leadership from our church had a long, prayerful conversation about how to respond to that struggle. It was decided that we would uh, prayerfully uh, send out a letter to all the members of our church, letting them know about the struggles and the opportunities that we were facing and how we could all be a part of helping, helping through those struggles and helping seize those opportunities. Many people responded so well. People were so generous and gave of their time and their, their resources to help us seize those opportunities to help us through that time of hardship. A few weeks after that letter went out, I called to check on Dr. Bill and Nat Schunk, who had not been able to come to church because of their own health problems. Dr. Bill has since passed away, and Nat now lives with her family in the Midwest. And I, I, I called to check on them because I was concerned about their health, and I'll never forget Nat's response. She said, oh, oh Pastor, I, I just want to thank you and the Budget and Finance Committee for sending that letter and letting us know how we could be a part of meeting that need. She said, we're not able to come much because of our health problems, but we want to help any way that we can. Thanks for letting us know so we can be a part of the solution to this struggle. I, I was blown away by that faithfulness. Thanks for allowing us to help meet this need in the life of our church. Responses like that have been flooding in throughout this difficult season we've been going through right now. Cindy tells us frequently of sweet prayerful letters that people send in with their tithes and offerings, and those are always so appreciated and so encouraging. Many have sent thoughtful texts and emails, and others have called and to, to check in, and the general consensus of all of that has been one of appreciation, of a desire to help any way possible, and a pursuit of faithfulness, even though faithfulness looks different right now than it normally does, it's never been more important in the life of our church than it is right now. I've shared the experience before of a cold and rainy Sunday in my first pastorate in Dublin, Texas, and I, I want to give a shout out to our friends from Community Baptist Church in Dublin who've been tuning in online for the last several months. It's been great to reconnect with you in that way. That morning, I walked to church early, and it was cold and, and rainy, and so I had my raincoat and my umbrella, and I was going through that torrential wind and rain, much like the rains we've been facing here over the last 
24 hours or so. And I, I got there early to turn the lights on and make sure the heaters were going. And I got inside the building and began the process, shivering of trying to get the building ready for everybody's arrival. And as I did this on that dreary day, I remember thinking to myself, we're going to be so down in attendance today. I, I even thought to myself, if they didn't pay me to be here today, there's a very high likelihood I wouldn't be here on this nasty day. And as soon as that thought crossed my mind, a van pulled up under our awning and, and dropped off E.C. and Velma Stratton. Now, to give you some background to that story, E.C. and Velma Stratton were 350 years old. Not quite, but it seemed like they were. And I visited with them in the hospital no less than 50 times during my pastorate there. And E.C. had major circulation problems that eventually led to his leg being amputated, and he struggled the rest of his life to a adapt to the prosthetic limb they had fit him, fitted him for that just didn't ever fit quite right. And uh, Velma had all kinds of, of health problems as well. And when I moved there, someone told me that the, banana, the, the Strattons had had one foot in a grave and, and one on a banana peel for many years. And there they were on that cold and rainy day, hobbling into our building. But we were way down in attendance that day, as I expected. But the Stratton family, with all of their ailments, was there to be counted among God's people, no matter how nasty the weather was outside. They taught me a valuable lesson about the spiritual quality of faithfulness. And I decided that day that if someone was faithful in their commitment, then there wasn't much of anything that would keep them from honoring that commitment. And if people weren't yet at that point of faithfulness. It wouldn't take much at all to get them out of the habit of doing whatever it was they had committed to do. And that principle has proven itself time and again in my experience. Things are really tough for us right now, and it's easy to get out of the habit of participating in these online worship services, Bible studies, and devotionals. It's easy to get kind of disconnected and to blame the shutdown for that disconnection. The truth of the matter has always been that we are responsible for growing in our relationship with the Lord. Our whole online presence at First Baptist Wessico is designed with the end goal of spiritual growth and connection for, for those who we are connecting with in faith, for our family of faith, but you have to want it, and you have to do it in order to get the most out of it. We can get frustrated by what we're facing, and that's okay. But we can also choose to seize this moment and let God use it to work in us and through us. We can make a choice to worship together in our homes as a family and to make the most of that experience, discussing what we're hearing, wrestling through this struggle, listening to each other and the burdens that we might have and taking those to the Lord together in prayer. We can participate in family devotionals throughout the week, taking the time to read the Bible together, to listen prayerfully to questions and struggles that our loved ones might have right there in our home. We can engage in Bible studies. Right now, Kim Curry, Steve Urbina, and Steve Urbina both have online or by phone classes on Sundays, and Joe and Robin and Ray and Yvette all lead online studies of different kinds throughout the week. You can call the church office and find out how to participate in these. There are many other ways to grow in faith, but like anything that's worth having in life, it won't happen if we don't make and can and keep the commitment to do it. We have to decide that faithfulness is a priority, and we have to give it the right place that it deserves in our story. The fruit of the Spirit is indeed faithfulness, and nothing can keep us from growing in faith if we live with this kind of faithfulness that's the norm of life in God's kingdom. Today's word that is here translated as faithfulness refers to the state of being someone in whom complete confidence can be placed. It speaks of trustworthiness and dependability. 
Faith is defined by the author of Hebrews as the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And being faithful means to be full of that kind of faith. We can be faithful because God is faithful and his word can be trusted no matter what. Even in the face of a pandemic, even dealing with a hurricane, God is faithful to us and we can be faithful to God. That kind of faithfulness includes believing, obeying, trusting, and hoping through faith in Christ. True faithfulness is fidelity that can be produced in the life of a Christian who is yielded to the influence of the Holy Spirit. It's loyalty that we show others because of our relationship with God. Faithfulness to God binds us together with other believers, and it makes us accountable to each other. Of all the virtues on this list that tend to be such short, in such short supply in our day, I think this virtue of faithfulness might rank near the top. So many of our older members describe the experience of working faithfully in one job for their whole career. And so few of our younger members will be able to share that experience. It was a blessing uh, a few weeks ago to celebrate 10, Cindy Cortez's 10th anniversary working in our church. She's done such a great job and we appreciate her service and we're grateful to be serving in a place where those jobs of service are so, so stable, where people tend to stay here for a long time. And, and that is unfortunately very rare in churches today. Having people serve in one place is becoming less and less common. Our, our jobs in general just aren't as secure as, as they used to be. That instability in the larger society tends to be spilling over into our homes as well. The divorce rate is alarmingly high in this country, and statistics indicate that that divorce rate is about the same within the church as it is outside the church, and that's a troubling phenomenon. And our churches aren't as stable as they used to be either. We've been blessed through this season to be praying for LeVon McDaniel, who's 96 years old, and has been a member of this church for so many, many years. And to see her getting better through her struggle with COVID-19, that's a great blessing. And we've now organized a meal train a couple days a week to kind of help her family care for her. And I would encourage you to look into that. And you can find out how to be a part of that online, or you can call our church office. LaVon is such a great example of faithfulness in our church. And, and there are many other examples like that, but those examples aren't as common as they used to be. It's growing more and more common instead for one family to hop from one church to the next, many times over the course of their life. Now, there are good reasons to break fellowship with a church, but often we do so over reasons that aren't so good, over different personality tastes, over personality conflicts that we don't want to deal with, and other factors that make us wonder how committed we really were in the first place to our family of faith. It's increasingly rare for a family to plant spiritual roots somewhere like LeVon McDaniel and so many others have done and say, this is where we will worship. This is where we will serve. This is where we will sacrifice. This is where we will raise our family and teach them faith and faithfulness. We can cite a long list of factors that contribute to those trends, but the primary one seems to be the spiritual issue of faithfulness. I cited pastors Kent Carlson and Mike Lucan from Oak Hills Church in Folsom, California, a few, a few weeks ago. Carlson and Lucan were co-pastoring a growing church when they began to discover some troubling things in their fellowship. It seemed that people weren't growing spiritually as much as they were consuming spiritual goods in the church. These pastors also began to discover that people were leaving their church to relocate to other churches down the street, and that the people coming into their church weren't new believers or believers returning to the faith as much as they were people coming from other churches across town. People were kind of relocating in the kingdom rather than experiencing true spiritual formation in the church. 
These two pastors became troubled that they weren't adding people to the kingdom of God or restoring people who'd fallen away from the church as much as they were sort of shuffling them around from church to church. They weren't fostering faithfulness in the lives of their people. Carlson began to really see this one night at a meeting, a meeting where they were welcoming new members into their church. As the ten new members described what brought them to Oak Hills, some had come from larger churches and others had come from smaller churches in the community. Carlson admitted that that whole conversation reminded him of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. People said that church was just too hard and that other church was just too soft, but yours is just right. Carlson began to share with the group what it means to be a church family and that it's impossible to create authentic Christian community with people whose commitment is dependent on having their perceived needs constantly met. The pastor talked about the importance of just taking a vow of stability and joining the church with the intention of sticking it out through good times and bad doing the heavy lifting that's required of authentic relationships, deciding that this is our church. This is where we'll serve. This is where we'll be a part of making a difference in our community. Carlson says, I described the church as being like a holiday gathering of an extended family where Uncle Fred always shows up drunk, Cousin Billy always brings his latest floozy girlfriend, Aunt Martha gossips about the whole family, and Grandma Helena somehow adores everybody. Now, we probably have different names in those, in, that play those characters in our own families, but we all have a family, and, and, and family is always difficult. And the family may be incredibly weird, but it's still our family. People aren't skipping Christmas this year to be with the family down the street. Now, when we're family, we learn to love each other, warts and all. And I love that description of what it means to truly be part of the family of God, that we learn to love each other, warts and all. That we learn to love each other in quarantine and out of quarantine. That we learn to love each other when we agree and when we disagree. That we learn to love each other when we look at politics the same way and when we completely disagree and vote differently. That we learn to love each other in person, and we still love each other online. That we love each other through thick and thin because the fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness, and such faithfulness is the norm of life in the kingdom of God. Sometime back, Andy Garcia and I were having a conversation about this kind of faithfulness, and he asked a great question. How do we build that kind of faithfulness in someone's life? That's a great question. I think we would all agree that true faithfulness is needed in our homes. It's needed in our church. It's needed in our community. It's needed in our world. But how do we develop that kind of faithfulness in the lives of people where faithfulness is not valued nearly as much as it used to be? I think the simple answer is that we don't build that kind of faithfulness in someone's life. Faithfulness isn't something we can even muster up in ourselves let alone in someone else. It isn't something we can build. It isn't something that we can develop. Faithfulness is the byproduct of a life lived into God's Spirit. If we want more commitment, if we want more faithfulness, if we want more loyalty, then we need to give the Spirit more control of our story. If we want more devotion, we need to immerse ourselves in God's Word where we learn what true devotion looks like. If we want more fidelity, we need to develop more and more the discipline of prayer, where we seek God's strength to stick with it through thick and thin. If we want more dependability, we need to grow in our experience of worship and fellowship, building our relationships with our community of faith. If we want more faithfulness, what we need is to draw near to the heart of God, and no one can do that for us. Sisters and brothers, as our faithful God continues to write his story in the life of our church, are we ready for him to write another chapter of faithfulness through us? As we go through these difficult times that we're facing together, will we respond 
to this pandemic? Will we respond to this literal storm that we're now facing with faithfulness? When the clouds of this pandemic lift and when this hurricane has passed us by and we're on the other side of all this difficulty, will we be able to look back and say that God used this time to develop true kingdom faithfulness in our homes and in our fellowship. We come this morning asking together, Lord Jesus, give us your faithfulness because we need it, our church needs it, and our world needs it desperately right now. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Thank you for God for this day. Thank you for giving us all another day of life. Thank you for allowing us to be here and watch Pastor Parker's service about being more faithful. Um, help us be more faithful to you. Help us practice faithfulness more. Um, please protect us. Protect everyone who's been affected by COVID. Protect um, our essential workers that are out there every day going out to work, our medical care workers, our first responders, everyone who has to go out right now and help protect others in our community, um, help protect our church, help protect our members, help protect everyone um, through these times. And we pray all this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Make us one in the body, make us one in his love, make us one in the Father, Spirit, Son. Make us shine in our city to our neighbors and friends. Make him know, Son of God, Son of Man. Many walk, many, walk, many, tongues, many tongues, many tongues, many lives done together in the sun. We are one in the body, we are one in this love. We are one in the Father's good Son. Let us love one another, let us put others first. Let our deeds show the heart of loving hands. Let us feed. Those who hunger, let us teach. Those who thirst, let our lives show we follow your.